The National Archives has released 2,800 records related to John F. Kennedy's assassination on November 22, 1963. The White House and President Trump decided to delay the release of tens of thousands of more pages. But we did find interesting papers that increase our understanding of the immediate aftermath of the assassination and how the CIA operated back in the 1960s. The first document that we found that was really intriguing was a memo that J. Edgar Hoover, the FBI director, wrote two days after the assassination. The memo is three pages long, but it finally ends with a hint of secrecy. Hoover writes, the thing I am concerned about is having something issued so we can convince the public that Oswald is the real assassin. Conspiracy theorists could read a lot into that memo. Although it's pretty clear by now that the government believes, has long believed, that Oswald was the lone gunman in Dealey Plaza, it's tantalizing to think that Hoover, in real time, was trying to force the issue, was trying to say, we need to make Oswald the lone assassin. The second most interesting document we could find was a report made in 1975 by President Gerald Ford's general counsel. It was a report on the CIA's assassination attempts over the previous decade. The report described a Pentagon proposed plan called Operation Bounty in which leaflets would be dropped by air into Cuba, trying to entice Cubans to kill or capture leaders of Castro's government, including Castro himself. Their reward would be money. And the report actually spells out how much money the Cubans would get. Up to $100,000 for government officials, $97,000 for, for foreign communist leaders, and $57,000 for department heads. For Castro himself, perhaps for symbolic reasons, just two cents. The third most interesting document that we could find was a deposition that the legendary former CIA director Richard Helms gave in 1975, answering questions to the Commission on CIA Activities. And at one point, the attorney turned to Helms and asked him point blank whether the CIA had any involvement in the assassination of President Kennedy. Well now, the final area of my in investigation relates to charges that the CIA was in some way conspiratorially involved with the assassination of President Kennedy. During the time of the Warren Commission, you were deputy director of plans, is that correct? And Helms replies, I believe so. But then the attorney asks him, is there any information involved with the assassination of President Kennedy which in any way shows that Lee Harvey Oswald was in some way a CIA agent or an agent? And then the document just cuts off. And we don't have the rest of the deposition. We'd love to know what the remaining portions say of the deposition. I suspect that Helms denied the assertion when the allegation that the CIA had any involvement in the assassination or that, had or that it had recruited Oswald as an asset. But it would still would have been interesting to see Helms' denial and how he framed the sentences, the words he chose. Trump has made it clear to national security agencies that he really wants to release all the documents in full by April of 2018. We don't expect a smoking gun to emerge next spring. We believe that if any smoking gun existed, it either would have emerged a long, long time ago, or more likely, it would have been destroyed.